So when it comes to entry-level video cards, I find a lot of people are using dual-core processors. But in the case of something like the GTX 750 Ti or the AMD Radeon RX 460, I can't help but question, is a dual-core really enough? So what we've done today is, yes, I have taken an X99 system and modified it, the settings to make sure that we could do this as mm, fair and comparative as apples to apples as we could. So what I did was I left it in dual channel mode running 16 gigs, albeit I know a little bit much for a budget oriented system, but it is running in dual channel mode and we have cut it back to 2400 megahertz. And as far as the cores go, we've disabled hyper threading and core count and turned things back on to the point where we are testing with a dual core, a dual core with hyper threading, a quad core and a quad core with hyper threading. Admittedly, I do know that some of those configurations are entirely overkill for something like a GTX 750 Ti, which isn't exactly an expensive or a really hard graphics card to run. So with the way we did the CPU for this test out of the way, we used the ASUS GTX 750 Ti OC edition from well, ASUS. Now this is of course a two gigabyte video card and we're going to test it in a variety of games, but we're only going to do three different games representing different classes of games. Now with each core running at a static 3.7 gigahertz, we're going to jump into the first game, which is Final Fantasy VII Heaven Sword. Now this game was run on the desktop normal or regular desktop preset at 1080p to get these results. And looking at it, you can see that really any CPU that you have that has at least more than one core, you're going to be perfectly fine very little deviation between any of the setups and even taking a picture of this snapshot that I took of the system resource monitor, you'll see that in the middle of this benchmark, only one CPU core was really even being used. So running a game like uh, Final Fantasy 14, you're good to go. Now looking at Fallout 4, a game that's fairly well threaded based on, well, whatever graphics card you're using and however many CPU cores you're gonna throw at it, it'll utilize as much as possible. But does that really matter with this game? Looking at the results, we see not a whole lot. Going to that dual core with hyper threading really does help smooth out the gameplay, but going past that did no real benefit. And now these, this game is set on the medium preset as listed in the, you know, the chart there. But it really, the dual core could handle it just fine. However, there was the occasional stutter that did take you out of that gameplay with the dips in the 1% lows and the 0.1% lows. Now, looking at a game that is fairly CPU intensive, we're moving over to Grand Theft Auto 5, and this game was run at 1080p with normal settings. All the way down, normal settings, no anti-aliasing. And in this game, you can see the CPU really does matter. The dual core simply couldn't present a playable experience even on the 750 Ti. It ran at abysmal, it ran half on average. The average frame rate was even about as bad as the 0.1% lows on all the other CPUs. Now moving up to the dual core hyper-threaded setup, it immensely improved the experience, made it a world's difference. Now going past that, even to an i5 setup or an i7, you really got no benefit from that. So there's really no point in going that far with an entry-level graphics card. So in the end, how much CPU do you really need for an entry-level graphics card like the 750 Ti or the RX 460? Well, truth be told, it kind of depends on the games you're playing. If you're playing MMOs, you're playing those eSports titles, then a dual core will actually do you just fine. Perfectly fine stick in there. However, if you're wanting to play AAA titles, even Fallout 4 benefited from it, but especially something like Grand Theft Auto 5, which even on these entry-level graphics cards at normal preset, even at 1080p, you can yield some really good frame rates. I highly recommend going no lower than at least four threads. Not necessarily a quad core, but at least four threads. So something like an i3 or even an, an Athlon X4 chip would be perfectly suitable. So a lot of you probably already knew this, but those who didn't, I hope you learned something. And if you got anything out of this video or you enjoyed it, feel free to like and subscribe. And this has been Keith with WCCF Tech, and we'll catch you in the next video.